Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Gilcast. It's your least favorite show. Nate had the blade. Sammy had a pretty good team, but I can't even criticize that hard. Um, and then I got there as well. Barely got there, though. Um, this is this is one of those weeks, guys, where it's like uh, I had. You know, I, I think it was I had nine hundred and thirty-three dollars of head-to-heads registered, and I'm getting back about one thousand and forty-three dollars of DK head-to-heads. Another great thing. Did not register for double ups at all this week, so it was only via the kindness of Gilcast listeners sending me games that I even got um, a respectable amount of action out there. Sammy, how are we doing, buddy? You're wearing your Steelers jersey. I feel like it takes a lot of uh, you know it takes a lot of heart for you to be wearing that Steelers jersey today. You know, it all it all just feels good because I played Deontay Johnson in cash and the Steelers won, and things are just things are just going great. Nate, you 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 played a jet, kid. You told us you weren't going to do it. <laughs> I did. I kept doing it. I martingaled it, and it finally worked. Man, it finally worked. Okay, next week though is the McCall Hardman Martingale week, right? It's got to be. It has to be. It has. Tyreek Tyreek is banged up. Watkins is banged up. They're not going to play Kelsey. Kelsey already locked up uh, most receiving yards ever by a tight end in a season. Um, most most touchdowns ever in a season for a tight end. I don't know if that's true or not. No. Yards for sure. I don't. Oh, think Gronk Gronk has to have most touchdowns. Yeah, Gronk right? had like seventeen one year or something. So so it's got to be it's got to be um it's got to be McCall Hardman Martin Gale week next week. Except I so I think Overzet is coming on the show with us next week. Um, he he does another show right around when we record this, so we might have to finagle that a little bit so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna promise it to the listeners but i think overzet is gonna play cash games next week in, in week 17 <laughs> that'll be gold <laughs> come on the show that'll be so good <laughs> yeah uh all right so in our three man nate big winner um with a sick team you scored 149.52 whirling dervish 146.8 uh i had 136.52 would that have been good in the massive twenty-five dollar double up, Sammy? Uh, good question. I can't scroll down it, that far. Let's barely. See. Yes. yes, you would have gotten there by a barely point. made it. The line was one thirty-five point seven. Yeah. So, so I I text you guys at about I don't know, probably about an hour after lock today, and I'm like, oh, I just didn't register for any double ups. Like, combination <laughs> of of the whole. I mean. I don't know how much you guys played like the showdown and the Saturday slates and stuff, but like, you know, I have full contest registered for that. I have, you know, NBA has started. We got um, soccer all day on Saturday. So like it just, and it was just one of those things where like, I remember to post my games and, and I even tweeted on Saturday. Cause I was like, I, I hadn't gotten that many invites to games. And I was like, you know, all my DK head to head bros haven't sent me any games. And then that got the invites in. And so I just didn't even play. I didn't even play double ups, but I have to say, in terms of sweating, really not that bad um, to just sweat head to heads because you're not you're not sitting there sweating whatever seventy percent ownership on some guy you don't have that much. Yeah, just just so much money. I had like over over exposure. I didn't do as many head to heads today, and I did a ton of a uh, ton of double ups and fifty fifty. So I'm glad uh, glad the team was good, man. David, yeah. you missed out on sweating the seventy percent owned David Montgomery and double ups. Oh, oh yeah, God. well, dude, our lineups, our lineups are freaking crazy, bro. The things that we did as a collective GoCast group are really out of. Yeah, I, I feel like our this was not a week where I'd be sweating being duped all that much. Um, my I team, didn't know because none of us played Jalen Hurts and none of us played David Montgomery. Not because... not playing Jalen Hurts. I I know you guys. I like what you guys did at quarterback, but I still feel like we all made minor mistakes relative because Hurts Hurts is like Hurts. Next year, Jalen Hurts, while he's healthy, is going to be an eight thousand dollar quarterback on DraftKings. He had a straight up bad game. Like the Eagles lost to the Cowboys, he wasn't really that efficient, and he got what twenty four DK points. Yeah, Hurts like, was a great play. I mean, there was three good quarterback plays. It was Mahomes, Hurts, Trubisky. For me, I just quarterback scoring is so tightly condensed that when you have a five point seven QB who is in a must win game with the second highest team total. I mean, what they had a 28.25 implied team total and he was 27 or he was 5,700. It was like a no brainer for me to play Trubisky. I wasn't not going to play Trubisky. So yeah, I, um, dude, I had, I had hurts all week, man. Hertz was a fantastic play. If you played Hertz, like he was, he was a great play, but I was literally two minutes away from like 90 seconds away 
from playing Marvin Hall in cash. Like that almost happened. And to, to not do it, I said, dude, I need to get off of Hertz. Like I can't, I, I can't play Marvin Hall in cash. And so like Trubisky at five, seven with that team total, I, with the way quarterback scoring works, like why would you pay 85, like three K more for Mahomes or 2,300 more for, um, for Hertz. Like when you get the second highest team total with Trubisky. I mean, well, let's, I mean, uh, so I think Trubisky was a good play. Me and you played Trubisky, Nate. Uh, Davis played, paid 8,500 to play Patrick Mahomes. I, put, I paid 8,500 for Chad Henney. <laughs> <laughs> he ate the, the Chiefs, um, like for the last couple of weeks, it's been like either they are not taking games seriously or they're they get up too early and they don't try. Today, they were just bad. They were, it was an all around. And and Hardman was the worst of them. I mean, he had at least three drops. Like just like, un- and Le'Veon Bell is just running like, uh, like it kind of like um um like a Komodo dragon, like side to side. It's just it's he, he like Le'Veon like after after about three four locos, bro. <laughs> like Le'Veon Bell is completely ethered at this point. But then they then they got themselves into a situation where, um they had to use Daryl Williams because they were having to run in these short yard situations. I mean, it was a nightmare. I will say though, Mahomes would have like, don't you guys feel 100% certain that if that game goes to OT, Mahomes gets the bonus and another passing touchdown. Like you're just like, that just for happens. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Of course. Mahomes, like, Mahomes, Mahomes in this. needs to basically run bad, not to hit the bonus. Like that's the thing about Mahomes. But I mean, Nate, like we, it, Trubisky clearly a good play, but we also ran hot with him. Like there were several instances, like we played Trubisky and not David Montgomery. And there were a couple instances where like short yardage, he ran a touchdown in and he threw touchdowns in instead of Montgomery. Yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham running hot. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was big, big equity shifts for us. No, I, I think what, I think what you guys did is fine. I mean, if, if I was not going to play, if I was going to play a chief quarterback, it would have been Trubisky. And I played Trubisky in the spy. Um, I did, I did a Trubisky double stack in the spy. Like I, I thought he was good. Um, the, I guess the, the weird thing though, is that Nate, Nate played Trubisky to pay up at tight end, which, but not for Kelsey though. Like, which it is, wasn't line paying up, Nate's up at line tight end. Up is straight weird, bro. Nate's it lineup is very paying bizarre. up at tight end. Well, everyone played Parham that in the world, but you. Well, well, no, I mean, no, I mean, Parham was what, 20, 25% of Okay, but he was in, out? he was in every optimizer, like every Okay, Goddard side. was, Goddard was 15% owned in my, tw- in the $25 double up. So like, I don't, I don't think I did like 15% owned for a tight end is not like doing something no one did. He was the second highest owned tight end in cash. Yeah. So here's the thing. I would not have played Dallas Goddard in my 970th lineup for cash. Like there was just not a world where I was playing because J- Rager was healthy and Deshaun Jackson was back. Like it's so crowded there. I don't think you could make the target share there. I, I thought Goddard's I thought Goddard been the second the highest tight. Goddard's been the main target for, uh, for Hertz and the way that Hertz plays like in the, in the, obviously it's a shorter sample, but he clearly likes Goddard and prefers Goddard to Hertz. Um, and yeah, Goddard at three, five, didn't feel like paying up, uh, paying up is like five K and above for a tight end. You know, what's wild is that Nate has less than like two and a half full seasons of data on Hertz to Goddard, but you feel confident in, this. but he feels confident. Brand, <laughs> <Nate>. <laughs> I, I think this is terrible. Nate just straight up. Uh, like, because I don't think it would have been bad if you use that salary to play like some smash six and a half k wide receiver that you liked uh but you used you used the difference in salary from trubisky and hertz to play a tight end instead of min salary donald farm no i did it at wide receiver well i played a wide receiver that's yeah, what I got, did. It wasn't that I paid up at tight end. Tight end at three point five well, is not. And I, up. I mean, you played, you played Robbie Anderson over T Higgins, who which I also think that was bad. No, I played Crowder over T Higgins, and then I paid, and then I paid up at the second, uh, second wide receiver spot for Robbie Anderson versus taking a three K punt that a lot of people did. So I didn't pay up. At yeah, tight imagine end. not playing Chanel, bro. 
L O L U. What I did was I avoided Jesus Davis. Your brand, I mean, that Chenault touchdown, like, basically got you there. I, I can't believe you. Oh, it did. I mean, without without that Chenault touchdown, yeah, we we do not get there for sure. Yeah, Chenault had like two point six points in cash games. Like, what what on earth happened? He was he was the like in blended projections. Like, if you used um, like DR and other sites, like he's he was one of the top value wide receivers, other than Marvin Hall who I was not playing. I was not yeah. playing Marvin Hall. Oh, bro, I was so close. I was so close. And I'm like, you know what? I can't do it. Like, he hasn't even been active for Cleveland. You know, like, he has been yeah. a, healthy, a healthy sit. It just couldn't happen. And, and I'm really glad that I made that decision. Davis, what did Chenault have before that play? 2.6 points or something? No, he had he had a couple catches in the fourth quarter. But it was a – it was, Sammy and I did this earlier. It was like he had – it was like a nine-point play on that on the very last play. Yeah. So that's what I, I didn't pay up at tight end. I paid up at a second wide receiver spot because I did not feel comfortable with any of those 3K punts. A lot of people played Chanel. A lot of people played um, played Marvin Hall. And I just, Sammy, I'm with you. When I saw Marvin Hall had not played in the two games for Washington, I'm like, I cannot play this guy, even if nobody is healthy in Cleveland. Like, yeah, you just, dude, you, 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 we get fooled so much by thinking, oh, there's nobody else here. Well, this guy's going to fall so, into a so, target share. No. What what is interesting though is that Austin Hooper saw fifteen targets. That's what we should have done. How much I mean, I mean, look, not playing Austin Hooper. Just if you if you just use your, your like if I just had used my brain, like my real brain, you go okay. This is this is the situation. They have three tight ends that do actually play. No wide receivers that actually play. Who are they throwing the ball to? Like Austin Hooper is just clearly, clearly the answer. Fifteen targets, dude. Fifteen yeah, they're, targets. Dude, they're just gonna go like heavy set, double tight end, a bunch of Chubb and Hunt, and throw it to their tight ends. That's exactly what they did. I mean, it, 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 even when they were down, they were like not winning this game. It, by the way, they lost. LOL. Hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. Gee, Jesus Christ, what you doing? <laughs> yeah. Can't stop um, Jamison Crowder. That's, Can't stop oh Jamison Crowder. Dude, Nate, I, I just I, I want to call you a fish. Well, well, well. Let's let's do wide receiver. Let's do wide receiver after we do um, running backs. Let's do okay. let's do running backs first. So so yeah. well, actually, in one second, I don't think Mahomes was bad, but this this does just illustrate why paying up for quarterback is so fraught. Like he he gets twenty and he's a lineup killer. Like it like he he just destroys the lineup with twenty points. Like he really does kind of have to draw like. You, you play him because he draws live to 40, you know, in a yeah. way that a lot of – like, you know, Trubisky is not drawing live to 40. You know, he's drawing pretty... never going to get the bonus. Like, it's yeah. Trubisky's yeah. never going to get 40. And that's the thing with Hurts and Mahomes. You're paying for it for the upside. Their mean yeah. is is a couple points higher than Trubisky. They're, most quarterbacks are going to score between 20 and 30 points. Yeah. Well, but more, like, the, more like 18 and 25. Well, most ones that are playable in cash between 20 and 30. And you're paying up for a guy who has a ceiling of 40, but if he doesn't hit that, he's just in the average outcomes for all the other quarterbacks on that week. So that's why I just prefer paying down at quarterback and cash games. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's some stuff we'll have to reevaluate over the offseason because we've, we're seeing these quarterbacks now. Lamar, Josh Allen, uh, Hertz is going to join this cast, Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray like these guys who are just getting 35 or 30 plus, you know, so often. For sure, but it's a lot of them have fallen back to earth, right? Like, you well, know, the, Rus the Russell Wilsons. Yeah, Russ the, is the dead. Tyler Murrays, even Lamar Jackson, who's been a little hot lately, really had a lot of regression this year. Like, dude, these guys have smashed for a couple of games, but like when you look at it over the course of the season, you know, it's like, man. Do like, you, do you remember, um, do you remember when we were playing Tyler Lockett and Cash every week and now he's like, he gets just he just gets like two targets for eight yards every week. I saw him at sixty five, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. Deontay Johnson got a plan. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay, let's go. Let's go to running back now. We all played Melvin Gordon. We all played David Johnson. We all played Austin Eckler. And uh, I gotta say, I mean, David Johnson was clearly David Johnson is why we all won. Um, well, Nate, that you, is, you had Crowder totally, as well, but but David totally Johnson got, got it done for us, but. I want to I want to pat myself on the back and be like, oh my gosh, you know, we were so sharp with Pro Size and Duke Johnson out. Like we really 
you know, we were just better than our opposition. You know, we, we just saw it out. No, 12 carries, three targets. He just ran hotter than the sun. That's all it, that's all it is. But the, but the, no, no, no. I, I, I disagree. I disagree. And the reason I disagree is because he's the only running back who got touches. He, yeah. I mean, they only ran somehow like 50 plays, which is crazy. And he's literally the only running back that got touches on that team. I think he ran good in the touches he got, but I think he ran bad to only get that many touches. Um, and in a game against a really bad defense where they had a pretty good team total and all this, like, I thought David Johnson, like, I never considered not playing him, honestly, which is really, really wild. The moment that you texted me this morning and said uh, ProSites is out because we already knew Duke was out, it was like, oh, man, because we saw him smash last week. He got the receiving bonus last week because he just got all this work both on the ground and through the air with these guys out, and they had a good matchup. And it's like, dude, for, for 6K – I can just like I, I thought he was a better play than Montgomery considered considering the price. Like I thought he was basically the same play as David Montgomery for you know fifteen hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah, I was shocked that all three of us played him because I really really liked him, and wouldn't I did, like we didn't talk too much about lineup construction this week. I was shocked when I saw that all three of us had him because I thought he was clearly the sharpest um, running back play. Obviously, the Eckler Montgomery thing I thought was pretty close. We should have gone Montgomery over Eckler. Like, I don't. Yes. That's a me yeah. play. Why did I play Eckler over Montgomery? I don't know we what I was. We are thinking. fish, bro. We are fish. Eckler, Eckler is Montgomery. Eckler is done, man. I just, I, I, I need think to be the done with reason, him. the reason I played Eckler was just like, okay, I'm like, this is Alvin Kamara workload. There's no Keenan Allen. He's gonna be Alvin Kamara without Michael Thomas, and it's just he wasn't. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the thing. It's like, oh, Keenan Allen's out. But we saw it, like, two weeks ago or whatever. It's like, yo, he's going to get 20. What's the what's the record for running back targets? He's going to break it. And he yep. didn't really come close. And then he didn't again today. We really ran hot for him to get that touchdown. Because oh, so hot for him get, to score. Yeah. yeah, they don't. Dude, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I never considered putting Kamara in any of my tournament lineups because I'm like, dude, there's no way he ever scores two touchdowns. And if that's the case – why are you playing him in cash when you have David Montgomery Nate, out there? Nate, do you re- do you know do you remember when Sammy played Leonard Fournette over Alvin Kamara on that one slate last year when they <laughs> yes. were the same price? Dude, and, he, and, he, and he outscored Kamara. And he dude. outscored him. He did. It. But that just all when when he was like scoring like when he scored his sixth touchdown, that was like all I could think of was just was <laughs> the just time that Sammy paid him. <laughs> the time that Sammy was like, no, thank you. <laughs> I'll take fat Fournette. Uh, but yeah, none of us played, none of us played David Montgomery though, which is like, I don't think that in and of itself, not playing David, like he, he is definitely getting to a price point now where a David Montgomery, what do you have? Uh, 88, 88 yards and, and a touchdown. Yeah. Like, but he, but, I mean, but he had some receiving, like, did he have like 25 total touches? The Bears scored 43. I mean, David Montgomery was clearly a good play and really for us, you know, uh, we were considering, we're, I don't know if you guys were considering anyone else, but it was four guys for me. It was the three we played, Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler, David Johnson, and then David Montgomery. And I had, I had Montgomery in before ProSize was out. Yes. I had Same. I had Hurts, I had Hurts David Montgomery over Mahomes DJ. Same. Yeah, I I wasn't on DJ until the ProSize thing came out. The ProSize thing is what switched switch DJ to being the play. But at first my build was Montgomery Eckler and uh, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon was the guy that I didn't consider getting off of. Maybe I should have with Freeman being in. Should we talk about that? Because Melvin Gordon is dusty as the underside of my nutsack. And And they didn't, they didn't throw to him. They didn't throw to him. It's not because he's dusty. I don't care that he's dusty. People say DJ is dusty. Montgomery is dusty. I don't care if he's dusty. It was the fact that he didn't get the reception workload and Royce was out there and there was, I, I just don't think I considered moving off of him enough after the Royce news. Cause I just kind of assumed all week that Royce was going to be out. And then with Royce being in, I probably should have looked harder at it. I didn't. I mean, Royce got, I, I, I he only got like two targets, but he was out there for all the passers. Right. He was, he was out there and they had Bellamy in for a little bit. I don't even know who Bellamy is. So that's Levante Bellamy. He played at um, central Michigan, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Davis. Um, I still don't know who he is. <laughs> I mean, it, but that's, but that's West, Western, Western, Western Michigan. My bad folks. 
Yeah. Don't, don't add him, please. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, but that was the thing is like, I think, I think our buddy John Proctor tweeted that the Broncos had eight different players with targets and none of them were Melvin Gordon. And it's like, wait, like Melvin Gordon isn't that bad of a receiver, but I guess they, they're just not doing it anymore. And I thought he'd get like two. So four targets. this is, this is, this is my opinion. Drew Locke is just so erratic and bad that random Denver players can just not be targeted for entire stretches because he just, he doesn't see them. Right. Like, you know, Judy, Judy will go through a a four game stretch with uh, like nine combo targets or Noah Fant will, will get two catches uh, in, in two straight games or something just because like Locke is just, he just doesn't know what he's doing. He's so bad. He's so inaccurate. Well, the other thing that was so tilting is when Locke, uh, when they got down to the The one one yard rushing touchdown, hurry up sneaks it in. Dude threw, 47 times and didn't target Melvin Gordon once. Like, come on, bro. Like, use your backs. Do something. Anyway, I thought I thought Gordon was a fine play, and he was certainly owned. Um, he ended up being 49% owned in the big $25. So, like, him doing bad was not that big of a deal. Um, but it was, like, the price point, right? It was, it was the price point at 5.6. Do you guys think that we should have considered Gio Bernard more, or were you fine, like, not? I was I played him a little bit in tournaments. I I never would have played him in cash. The the cheap running back I would have played in cash was Daryl Henderson. Yeah. Same. I don't think I considered Gio. Which I don't even actually know because I kind of was tuned out for the afternoon games. Um because I, I used up all my serotonin willing Mahomes to that passing touchdown to D Rob uh at the end and the, there. And the LaVisca, the LaVisca like Patrick Ewing dunk over somebody in the end. Yeah. Zone. So Henderson, I, I mean, he, I, I did see, I did turn the TV back on to watch him pull his hamstring as he was running into the end zone. Yeah, he, he was not targeted in this game, so probably, probably would have not been great yeah, either. I just, I just thought the workload between him and Brown was just so unclear. Like they can use Brown in the passing game and the rushing game. I mean, I think the thing that we need to talk about, and and we alluded to it, but we need to really be admonished for our fishy. Uh, take here was playing Austin Eckler over David Montgomery like in it was bad in the results but I think it was bad in the process also like because Austin Eckler can disappear and these days David Montgomery is not disappearing and in cash that's like the whole game and also Montgomery has just way more touchdown equity like the reason we play Eckler is because he can get double digit targets right um that's that's why we do it but I I just don't think that's enough when you have a guy who's getting like 20 plus carries and a couple targets and goal line work like it was really 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 bad I had the extra hundred dollars um I think that was the difference I had it so I'm I'm pretty mad at myself for that decision yeah I mean there's no other running backs that Chicago wants to use I mean finally we saw them give like uh Pierce a couple carries but they don't want to use any other running backs where um the Chargers will rotate in Balaj, uh, will rotate in um, Jackson. Jackson, uh, Jackson oh, will rotate in. in this game. Yeah, and so it's like there are other running backs that they use, and it's like where Montgomery is the guy in the backfield. So I feel fishy about it too. He, I had the extra hundred. I, the reason I did it was just all I could picture was Kamara with with no Michael Thomas, and I just thought. I mean, Eckler I literally was only, thought Eckler was only targeted I thought Eckler three would have a twenty percent target share. I thought he was going to have a 20 plus percent percent target share. I really did. Well, I mean, that, well, but that's kind of the, you know, we talk about like, oh, this guy does this with this quarterback in a small sample size. Eckler, the first four games with Herbert was a complete smash show. But the last couple of games, like all of a sudden he gets like four targets, three targets. And it's like, ah, you know, we can't really just say, oh, he's a 20 percent guy. Like, it's hard for a running back to be a 20% guy. It's really well, hard. well, no, it's not. It is hard if your quarterback is Justin Herbert though, who's a cowboy. Like or, or he doesn't he doesn't care if it's Steven Anderson, dude. He's he's throwing he's, he's chucking seeds, dude. He does not yeah, care. He's not, dude, he's not it, Drew Brees can can sustain a 20% Yeah, target. Phil 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 Rivers loved to target his running backs cuz it gave his his 40-year-old bumpy arm a break. But but Herbert is like, bro, Mike Williams is running free down the seam. I got to make this throw, you know? Yeah. I would do if I could throw like Herbert. Like I wouldn't check down to Eckler. Forget that. And Eckler's like five foot seven. He's a hard guy to hit. You know, I I I, I think it was really bad. I think it was bad, and we should feel bad. Um, and we're lucky to win because Eckler- well, the thing we should actually feel the worst about. How have we not learned the lesson with the Texans defense? Like they could. I don't. 
they could play a college team, dude. I don't know if I would play them. Like, what? what is the deal, dude? Just, just so the, the listeners know, I've never received so many texts throughout a day. <laughs> it was unbelievable, dude. I mean, about a defense special teams from Davis. Like, you tilted Houston so bad. I mean, they were, they were, they were crappy. They're, you know, J.J. Watt is a – Sammy, we got minus four from a defense that was facing the Cincinnati Bengals without Joe Burrow or Joe Mixon. Or, or what? Uh, what or did we Tyler do? Boyd. What did we do? I don't know. I mean, I think I feel like the process was fine. It, was it not? Like they were a big home favorite. Like in yeah, it's stuff. but it's just like the Panthers were playing Haskins. I, you I know? honestly thought they were going to lose. I thought I thought Washington was going to win that game. So I, yeah, I, I, don't I know. It, but the the Texans, dude, against. Was it Finley or Allen who played at quarterback? I honestly don't even know. Doesn't matter. They didn't generate a sack. They didn't generate a fumble. They didn't generate any statistics. Like, you know how on, on DraftKings they display all the stats and everything that your guys have accrued? The only stat associated with the Houston Texans defense is one 35-plus points allowed. That's it. Minus four. I don't think I have ever gotten minus four from a defense before i think you know in the case of like the jaguars you know or whatever i feel like they've always grinded out like a point that that week when you and i played the buccaneers i think they at oh, least man. got a point dude <laughs> oh man so so the Bengals ran 70 plays and on zero of 70 plays did they get sacked or turn the ball over it was really incredible and alan alan <laughs> played for them alan threw for 371 on their face just a complete dunking <laughs> JJ Watt's gonna retire, bro. <laughs> and the and the the thing is, is I like the Panthers defense too. I played them on FanDuel, so it's like I don't even think I even considered it though. I literally, fade him. I played him on FanDuel. I didn't fade him. I played him on FanDuel. I played, I played, I played uh, your boy Deontay on FanDuel, which which Sammy did David as well. On FanDuel, and you played Sammy. I still can't believe you played Deontay. Oh, bro. I mean, let's let's talk about it. So right before lock, I mean, 90 seconds before lock, I, I pivoted off Hertz, Montgomery, and Hall. And I went down to Trubisky from Hertz, and I went down to um, David Johnson. Or no, I went down to, to Gordon, I think. Um, I went down to Gordon, and then I went up from Hall to Deontay Johnson because I just could not stomach the thought of playing Marvin Hall in cash. And I'm like, all I need to do really is put in a running back that I like about as much as Montgomery. And all I need to do is go down from Hertz to Trubisky and I can play a receiver that is going to get like double digit targets. Like he just does it all the time. And lo and behold, he did alphas only Deontay, the alpha caught that long dude. He should add another touchdown and the bonus. And they had to pass interfere with him when he was like streaking open. He would add a touchdown. Like Deontay should have had like 30 plus. Um, yeah. He only had, he only had two, he only had two drops on the first drive. So that was like good for him. Uh, Yeah. But, but I want to throw this out there and this is a bad reason, but when I saw that this was possible, I said, you know what? This is good for the show. Either way, either Deontay yeah. smashes or Oh my god, dude, he did it again. 14 targets, 75 yards. He is just the worst. He's dude. Incredible. <laughs> he it's is... incredible, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> like I know it's kind of a function of the offense because Ben really can't throw deep anymore, but like this is terrible, dude. Yeah, I mean the Steelers are terrible to watch. They they really are, dude. I mean, this was this was pretty awesome for me. Like, uh, I'll be honest with you. Like, Deontay's he got wait. They targets. they I didn't even realize they won this game until right now. Oh, yeah, I thought they, they lost. Oh, oh, I thought bro, they so, lost. Oh, you guys don't even know that. So my wife is a Colts fan, <laughs> and, so, and so we had a like a legit bet on the game. Like, I can't really go into details, but it involves like her doing something sexually that's very dirty that she wouldn't <laughs> otherwise normally do. And uh, this what is happening? Back. Dude, this is so great for me. I want you guys to know this has been a, an amazing day, and it's going to just continue to be more amazing. So hats off to Deontay Johnson. Hats off to the Steelers. Hats off to Ben Roethlisberger for throwing 300-plus and three touchdowns against the vaunted Colts defense in a comeback win. Things are good for your boy, Sammy. Let's go. Deontay Johnson, like, just makes me sick. Alphas. <laughs> it's so disgusting, Sammy. Every you time guys, you slap him, you guys, I'm literally this just guy. He's stunned. getting like 13 targets every game for 6,300. Like, why Why not play him? Why would you not play him? 
yards yards per target bro like who gives a shit he's getting 13 and 14 targets all the time like why why do you not want that because he's so bad it, who cares who cares you, do you guys want to know who the actual 3k play was at receiver who who it was alex erickson Oh, why well, never would have played him? What what did Gallup? Here, here's a question. Gallup. What did Gallup cost on DraftKings? Because I played a I bunch of CD Lamb and a bunch of Amari Cooper, but I didn't play any Gallup. Yeah, I think Gallup was 41, um, and he completely smashed. But oh, like, so man. we all played Higgins, right? And the field played yeah. Higgins. Higgins was. I did not play percent. Higgins. I played oh, Crowder yeah, over yeah. Higgins. No, that's right. Yeah, you're because you're sharp. Um, Higgins no, Higgins. Higgins was a lock. Nate is Nate is very bad for not playing him. I'm not sure about it. Why? No. Okay. Why was Higgins? He a lock? I was going to say I viewed Higgins and um, and Crowder as very very similar plays. They projected within a point for me, but I went with Crowder just because he he just Cause, has cause a higher you had share. To, you had to play a jet. Had to play a jet. He had to play a jet. <laughs> <laughs> had, play a jet. <laughs> <laughs> had to for the brand. No, I mean. Crowder literally just has like above a 25% target share every single week. He was like the third highest target share projection on the slate outside of like Ridley and Robinson. So it was, for me, I just felt he had a much better floor than Higgins, even though they both play in terrible offenses. I don't think Higgins was like a, a lock compared to Crowder. It's just that you don't like the Jets, but you don't realize that like both of the, both, T, both of them are terrible teams. Both T and Crowder were in the, the optimal for DR. It's, I mean, it's um, very sharp. I mean, so but why, why was, was one the lock why was versus the other? lock though? Just because Boyd's out? Are we all of a sudden saying, "Oh yeah, he's gonna get like way more targets now"? Well, he did, but also T is an alpha. I'm I'm not I'm not sure if he's an alpha. Oh, buddy, do you see his touchdown catch? He is an it was, alpha. It was beast. It was beast. That was an alpha play. But like Erickson played the slot, like he just played instead of Boyd and got six targets. Like. Did they really change their offense? Like, they just ended up running 70 plays. You know what I mean? I don't think they really, like, changed anything or, like, Higgins got so much more work. You know what I mean? I mean, he got nine targets on 37 dropbacks, so it's, like, 23.5%. It's good, right? But, like, I don't know. I, 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 get, I get very squirrely about saying, oh, this receiver's out, so this other receiver is going to get, like, just way more work. Like, it just doesn't often work like that, and – I mean, Higgins was a good play, but I, the fact that he was 44% owned, I'm not sure that that was a thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I thought Higgins was a good play. I thought Crowder was a good play. I went Crowder. It worked out. I thought, I thought, I mean, I made, I know it was like, ended up being fine that you played Robbie, but I feel like it was just in the context of what was going on. Like you're like the, the, the 2v2 of, uh, like T versus Hertz, all right. T T and Hertz versus Trubisky and Anderson. I bet I bet T and Hertz were projected uh, at three points better. I had Robbie projected so like Robbie was one of the best wide receiver values on the slate for me. Um, what what does he have? What does he have? Like some sick whopper? Like he's what does he have that like other projection systems no, don't have? Dude, that you have he's going been, for him? DJ Moore has been out whoppering him for like the last five weeks. Like, yeah. Well, like no. I mean, Robbie is still the leading whopper on the team, uh, and Robbie. I mean, at fifty five hundred, Robbie Anderson is just an unbelievable value. This week it didn't really work out. He got fifteen points. But he had a 35% of the team target share. Uh, Bridgewater only passed 28 times, and Robbie saw 10 targets. This was a game where if the game flow was different, Robbie literally could have had 25, 30 points here at 5,500. Robbie's floor is so high. At 5,500, like, he was such a great play. I just couldn't find a build to get to both him and um, and Ridley at all until later in the day today. So once I found that build, I was like, I can play him. I'm doing it. Robbie was a great play at 5-5. Five, five. If Robbie's 5'5 five, five or anything close to that again next week, he's going to be in my lineup. He's just one of the most cons- – he always gets targeted. He's never going to be not targeted. So, His floor is insanely dude, high. Had, at he only had five targets last week. I know that that's like – So we had, we had T for 12.7, and we had Robbie for 14.5, just think, which sounds about right. Yeah, but but here's the here's the other thing, Davis. You're but saying, but like, we had Jalen for we had Jalen for twenty four, 
and Trubisky for 21. Yeah, so, but yeah. It's not a 2v2. There is a $1,300 difference from Hertz to Trubisky and only 800 from from T up to Robbie. So, it's not it's not a straight 2v2. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just that that's what I I'm also looking got at. to Goddard over the tight end for, for that $800. Yeah. That was smash. <laughs> Sma- Goddard well, smash. I mean, it was well, a, Goddard it plays every smash. freaking snap, basically, where you guys play a guy who you're praying gets two targets where Goddard's out on the field every single snap, basically like you guys, I, I get that. Like Goddard didn't smash in the spot and sure. He's only had a couple weeks, but the, the Eagles run a two tight end offense almost or like more often than any other team in the league. I know, but and I, what Goddard's I'm telling like you in expected points for tight ends this year. And he's three, six, like instead you guys just take, took a hope and a flyer who could have easily zeroed. Like sure. It wasn't a huge Delta this week, but like, projection wise there was a huge delta there I, I i actually agree with you nate so i miss projected what i thought how much i thought parham would be on the field like i certainly wasn't expecting him to be a full-time guy he's tall and he's thin he's not a big blocker right but i thought he would be like the pass catching tight end and instead he was rarely on the field i don't have his snap rates but he was rarely on the field and i think he was pretty lucky to get like two 20 yard plus receptions um, on, I think, is only two tar- targets. I mean, he really was not a big part of that offense. But they came out and they said, oh, Parham's going to start. He's going to be our tight end. So I was like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. For 2,500, it's straight. Uh, as it turned out, I think that was a bad choice. And I think you're absolutely right. Like, Goddard is out there every snap. Like, he's only 3,600. I think he was a far better play than Parham. So I'm, I'm taking the L. I'm agreeing with you. I have a W. I see. I, I, I think – I think that Goddard was just being mega over projected with Rager healthy, Alshon back, D Jacks active, Fulgham earning snaps, Ertz playing more snaps. Like I understand that Ertz, I understand that Goddard plays a lot, but I do, I did not feel confident that his target share would hold with all of these dudes back. Yeah, but it doesn't need to because he's three point six. You know what I mean? He well, Parham was two point be... five. Yeah, but and I felt I felt. I felt very confident that Parham would have some sort of usable role in the passing game. But more importantly, um, I felt I felt pretty confident that he if if the thesis behind Parham playing more was accurate, that would come with red zone snaps and red zone targets because that's really what they've used him at. And it's not like he was. It's not like a guy coming off of ice. He played twenty four snaps last week against the Raiders in a game where Hunter Henry was active for. And so he like saw I, one target. He's only – he's played how many games this year and, and like, how many one-target games has he had? You literally have Goddard who sees, like, between six and ten targets a game five weeks in a row, six weeks in a row. Like, you're comparing a literal prayer on someone that you know is going to run routes and get targets. Yeah, the, the other thing is, like, Kelsey, I think, was, like, 22 to 25% owned on this slate. And if – somebody like him is going to be owned and he is going to score a lot of points. And he did, you can't take a freaking zero at tight end. Like you have to be so much better at every, at so many other spots to be able to make up that difference that like, you can't take a zero. And we came dangerously close to taking a zero, bro. Like I, I feel pretty bad about Parham. Honestly, I should have played Hooper. I should have played Hooper. But yeah, we all, we all should have played Hooper. Played Hooper. How, was the play. Yeah, How much was Hooper? Was he the same as 3,900? I think yeah. Parham was very similar to who was the New Orleans tight end Troutman, Troutman. <laughs> Troutman. where like the industry gets on a guy and it's like, we just lose sight of his floor and everybody's like, Oh, he's a lock for 10 points. And it's like, actually he's got like a 60% chance of getting a zero here. And because the industry all just talks about him, everybody feels comfortable slotting him into their lineups. Okay. But taking what into if, account the floor, what if we get the, the stat counts and everything for this game and Parham played, 60% of the snaps and ran 25 routes. Like, what do you change the way you feel? Yeah. Yeah, if Parham actually ran 25 routes and 60%, I'd be – yeah, then then you got good usage and you just got a quarterback who didn't target him. Like, if that's what you get at 2.5, then, yeah, that's a good play. But I, I don't know if that's what you could have projected going into it. I, um, I agree. Can 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 we can we just back up a second and talk more about the Jamison Crowder play? Like, Nate, yeah, Nate, a, just Nate, just beat your chest, bro. Just be like, I trust the ma- I trust I, the math. The math is with me, and I am one with the math. Come on, just I mean, do it. But not only was it the math, but Nate like flew in the face of everything and played a jet when he promises every week to stop playing jets. 
And then he takes the guy who has the gadget floor. Like Crowder had a 43-yard touchdown pass. He had a 14-yard run. And he had nine targets and a touchdown reception. Like, he was just everywhere. He was the man. Nate, he was the man. You're he was all over the field. Every single play. It's just like they're trying to get Crowder involved. And I'm like, I, lo- I mean, a 4-5, it was like, oh, this is a smash play. This is a smash play. And then he just kept on getting used, kept on getting used. He didn't get the bonus. He was, like, a couple yards away from the bonus because he, like, I think he had 20-something points at half. Yeah, and then, like, he, did it's nothing. He threw that touchdown, you know, that, that yeah. robbed him of some receiving yards. But no, I mean, I felt good about Crowder. I mean, again, I know the Jets suck, but like, volume is volume. Crowder has like above a 25% target share that you can project every single week at four or five. Like, the volume works out. I know these guys are dust. I know everybody talks about efficiency, but like, David Montgomery, DJ, Crowder, Johnson, these guys Johnson. do work out. These guys do work out. Jonathan Johnson. I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, yeah, I, I just never put Crowder in my player pool. I was never going to play him in any lineup because I'm like, I'm not playing any Jets. Like, it's just such a good rule. Um, but, but why I, were the why were the Bengals in such a – like, everybody played T. Higgins, but nobody yeah. could play Crowder. Like, what – I mean, those are – T Because T has gotten it done with shit quarterbacks already. Like, T, T has Crowder, been – Crowder has too. Crowder had those games – he had three games at the beginning of the year where he like had double digit yeah. targets and bonuses. Like he I mean, like, I don't, I don't really have an explanation for it. Uh, also, I do know that we, from looking at like how we pull our ownership projections, I look at other sites stuff and like at DR, we always have Crowder like a point higher than everyone else. Um, so I assume he was not like, well, Cr- Cardi actually always projects them really high because Cardi doesn't care. Cardi, yeah. it's just the math, baby. Dude, Car- Crowder and Nate's, Cardi and Nate's models are very, very similar. Like, they just get fat dome boners, and they love Jameson Crowder. Whoa. And uh, things tend to Man, when you, play, when you, when you guys, build by the math, it, it, hap- it, it it's surprisingly math. Cal- Calvin, Calvin Ridley, consistent. Calvin Ridley, almost the worst play of the slate. So close Oof. to just being so bad. He gets, he gets one 54-yard catch at the end of the first half where he takes a terrible line he could have scored. But for, for big chunks of this game, uh, the fellow was was not very available. It was um, he he wasn't, but in the end he had whatever 130 yards, and he was very close to like touchdowns in multiple plays. Two plays, yeah. At, at least, I mean, he was really really close. Like Ridley could have been a complete smash. So yeah, he was like receiver That's... non grata the first half, but like he was he was a good play, I think. That's what you get though, like we talked about it last week with Ridley. Why I love Ridley so much is that he gets the targets plus like the crazy a dot. So he's just a naturally higher variance player than like a Devonte Adams or whatever. Like Ridley can have seven points going into the th- fourth quarter and then get to 25 or 30. He's like very similar to Tyreek in that way versus he had, a, he had, he had three for a hundred. He had the bonus on yeah. three catches. Like when he got and there. That's, so, like, you have to – when you're paying 8.5 for a guy with that dot, you have to know that you're playing a high-variance guy that, like, could kill you, but also could go for 40. Yeah, I yeah. just – I mean, I think we all assumed the Chiefs were going to just absolutely murk the, the Falcons here. So, I just thought there would be a lot of throwing. Matt Ryan only threw it 35 times. Like, that – yeah, that's that's way less than I kind of. This thought. is just it was just a disgusting, terrible game, dude. It was so brutal. It was an awful game. This is really bad. It, it's it, you must feel good to see Todd Gurley kind of be relegated to the third string running back on on Atlanta these days. Except he did he did have um a thirty yard catch on the first play from scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, that was tilting. For my uh, and then he immediately went to the sideline. He's like, all right, I'm done. That's all the knee can handle anymore. Yeah. Okay, here's a good question. Is Todd Gurley going to be on an NFL roster next year? No. Yes. He'll be somewhere. There'll be some team like the Jets. It, it'll, be like, it'll be like when um, Jamal Charles was on the Jaguars. You guys remember that? No. <laughs> Jamal, Charles, Jamal Charles was on the Jaguars for like a week. I don't know if he ever even got in a game. He also... Uh, what you get, do you remember when Jamal Charles was on the Broncos? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. That. So in in 2018, when Jamal Charles was 32, he recorded six rushes for seven yards for the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
Well, I mean, literally in three years, you're going to be like, hey, do you guys remember when Todd Gurley was on the Falcons? <laughs> like, hey, guys, do you remember when Todd Gurley was the number one running back in fantasy football and then literally was undraftable two years later? I mean, it's it's real talk, but we've seen it happen with so many running backs before. Like, I feel like this this stuff happened with, like, guys like Edger and James. It happened with Jamal Charles. Like, one minute they're, like, they, they look usable, and the next minute they're just gone. Like Kyle Zeke James Elliott. Was a, I mean, all of these guys, that's what running back is. That's the position. Like, get used to it. You're going to have these guys go off, and then two years later, they're dust. It just, it's the position. What, yeah, it, what it really can is. you I do? Mean, we're going to look back at Todd Gurley's, like, stats and be like, dude, he scored nine touchdowns, and then he was out of the league? Like, he scored nine touchdowns this year. <laughs> yeah, but they were – one of them was literally an accident. He didn't even mean to. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but before we get out of here, I want to look at the games that are going to be the toilet bowl games because because it's all a week seventeen. There's no Thursday night. There's no Monday night. It's all on Sunday, yeah, right? So okay. it's a huge so, so, it's a huge slate. Yeah, I I absolutely love it. So, do you guys tend to play more on more because I I'm sick because I love because I. It didn't used to be that it's not going to be this way now. Everyone's going to know who's in and out and like who's good. But like five years ago, like when Niall Davis would be the starting running back and the only active my favorite running back, week 17 of all time. Yeah. Like now I think Niall Davis said, we talk about this every year. He had like 150 yards and two touchdowns. And it was, it was I think they played the Steelers maybe. Um, How dare you? Yeah. And he, he was like 15% owned maybe in contests like you you could just get away with it so i'm still i'm still chasing that dragon so uh jaguars colts the colts need to win right the the, for for playoff purposes oh yeah i think they're i think they're on the outside looking in so they definitely need to and i mean jonathan taylor scored twice today but i mean jordan wilkins is gone like yes i don't yeah i don't think he played at all like jonathan taylor will be expensive but he really might be worth it uh okay well let's let's look at games that don't matter right let's 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 look at games that don't matter um i think steelers browns matters now i think i think the division. but i think the browns can still make the playoffs right yeah yeah it matters to the browns uh, i don't think it matters to the steelers so so anthony mcfarland probably for them anthony mcfarland and wendell smallwood hot yeah uh so no but no no Falcons Buccaneers doesn't matter, right? Because how could how could that matter? It I don't can't. Know. I mean, we, Buccaneers we really are should be trying to figure out. We we have yeah. no idea. We're we're really stupid. The only games that we know matter is the NFC. Okay, no, no, I completely up for grabs. Okay, the Buccaneers game does matter. I'm an idiot. Yeah, Why? Because we can't do this. We'll we'll go through every game and be like, does this matter? No, no. Matter? I I got the I got the chart. I got the chart up. I got the chart up. We can do this because no. the Saints can the Saints can lose to the Panthers and the Buccaneers can beat the Falcons and I'm sure there's some tiebreaker at play. I'm just trying to look for. I'm just. This to, is what people listen to the show. This is for. awful, Dave. So here, this is, go. <laughs> I'm sure there's something somewhere. I'm sure. I'm sure well, I want to find the teams that have nothing to play for because those are the, where the plays come from. Look, dude, don't do this. Just wait for Adam Levitan to like tweet out what matters and what doesn't on Tuesday morning. Like, look, you do this, this is Chiefs, the week you need to tune into Silva. Yeah. Chiefs, why Chiefs, Chargers, Chargers <laughs> dude. Chiefs, Chargers is going to be the D gaff bowl because it'll be Matt Moore and McCall Hardman. It's it's time. It's time. We need it. Can't do it. Come on, dude. McCall Hardman and Cash? Not, I mean, maybe. I'm not gonna, I'm not taking anything off the table. It's week 17. Okay. Okay. Do you remember, do you remember the 1v1 that cost, well, I don't remember what you guys did, but it was Duke Williams versus Robert Foster for the Buffalo Bills last week 17. Oh, Robert man. Foster put up zero catches, zero yards, zero touchdowns. Duke Williams had seven receptions, 125 yards, and a touchdown. Oh, yeah. I had all the Reuben Foster. I remember that. <laughs> I had all the Foster. <sighs> I hate week 17. I'm the opposite of Davis. I am the opposite of Davis. I always play lighter on week 17. I'm like, yeah, I, I hate week 17. I'm going to yeah, lose. I'm telling you right now, I will lose next week. Like, well, I just. I mean, here, so here, here's the thing. Like, you know, I if, always if lose on week 17. 
All, ever since Nile Davis, I've lost every single week 17. Here, here's, here's the other thing. Like, you know, if you're already up this year, right, it's, it's, it's all, like, against your taxes. You no, know. no. It's after New Year's, bro. So you got to enter all the games before New Year's Eve. Enter all your contests. No, dude, oh, that's not man. the way it works because it'll pay out after. So you, it's, it's only tax write-offs until the first. Well, screw it, bro. It's 2021. Like, let's go. New year. Like, screw 2020. Like, the, the, the only way to start this damn new year off. No, if, you're, if you were up for the year, the slate to go all in on was this one we just got done with. Well, that's good then. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. We got, we got anything? Anything else? I don't think so. No, man. I still can't believe we got a negative four at defense and like still swept cash games. Yeah, and we, we should have. And we all faded Jalen Hurts and we all faded <sighs> David Montgomery and we all. But I didn't have any Davis. Chiefs exposure and I still survived. Like, I I feel so lucky this week. I just want to close the laptop and walk away from the table. Yeah, sometimes you gotta you gotta know window window. Folder. When to play Lavisca Chanel? <laughs> yeah, you gotta know. You gotta know when to uh, when to jam in. Yeah. All right. God, I wish Robbie Anderson had a smash in this game. I so wanted it. I wish Deontay Johnson oh. had a smash. I wish. I wish Deontay had smashed, and you guys have lost. This would have been a. This would have been the show of the year. I really do wish Davis lost. I like this week, if Davis is yeah, dragging his way up. Me too, Davis. This you're... show would have been so much better if Davis. Yeah, I was in a, I was in a dark place for a while, dude. It was bad. <sighs> you're, you're when Davis is sending year, us the Texans defense stats, I wish the listeners could have been privy to a loss. I, I like it would have made the show. I would have, um, I would have had some good self beratement because playing the Texans defense, there's no excuse. They don't care, man. They don't care. Talk about a team that already in week 16 doesn't care. The Houston Texans defense. You got pieced up by Ryan Finley, bro. <laughs> J.J. Watt went off in his post-game press conference. It was, it was gold. Oh, did, he, did he swear like, did he swear like Nate Nolan? He's like, great, golly gosh. Like, this is oh, he actually dropped some legit things, which was surprising. Oh, yeah. We love to see it. J.J. Watt. All right. That's it. Everyone, we'll be back. We'll see you next week, week 17.